Hello everybody and welcome back to Lost Planeswalker. You're here with me, Jesse, the Lost Planeswalker. And today I'm doing a new commander deck around a Modern Horizons 3 commander here with Arna Kendru Sky Captain, which I'm calling the Bestow Master. This is a brand new Esper legendary creature that does some things Esper has never seen before, so I'm sure it's going to be very fun. So, Arna here, two white, blue, black legendary creature, human, knight, with flying and lifelink, and ward, discard a card. Whenever a modified creature you control attacks, double the number of each kind of counter on it. Then for each non-token permanent attached to it, create a token that's a copy of that permanent attached to that creature. Very interesting commander, but I think there's three paths you can directly go. First, you can build around counters. Any different type, you know, of counters, maybe you're going to do some shield counters from Nuka Penna, making it so your creatures aren't going to die. Maybe you have, you know, certain individual counters like Death Touch or Indestructible, you know, from different sets. Or maybe you're just going straight plus one, plus one counters. Now, all of those are going to be good, but I think you're going to get a lot more value very quickly from the second half, which copies non-token permanents attached to it. So basically, that leaves you with auras, and specifically under auras, we're looking at bestow creatures, and that's what this deck is going to be. Now, the bestow creature is from the original Theros sets, and it says bestow, if you've cast this card for its bestow cost, it's an aura with enchanted creature. It becomes a creature again if it's not attached to a creature. So interestingly here, Arna is going to make copies of these bestow creatures while they're on a creature as an aura. Then when that creature dies, you fill your board up with all of these bestow creatures that are now creatures instead of auras. It's a very cool effect and we'll run through some of those very cool cards, but let's see how this deck is going to be split up. So obviously we're going to have bestow and aura cards. Next up, we're going to have enchantment value, so stuff that cares about you playing enchantments. And then lastly, our good stuff that's going to help us complete some of our strategies and win the game. So first off, let's look at the best of bestow. Now there aren't as many bestow cards as you would like, but there's a good number in these colors. So first off, we have Celestial Archon, Eidolon of the Countless Battles, and Night Howler. Celestial Archon is three white white enchantment creature Archon with bestow for five white white. Flying and first strike, an enchanted creature gets plus four plus four and has flying and first strike. So every time you would make a copy of this, you're going to give it another plus four plus four flying and first strike, which those are redundant abilities, but that plus four plus four is pretty serious. And let's say you have two or three of these on a creature and they die. Now you have eight or 12 power just for having the creature was on die. Very fun. Eidolon of Countless Battles, one white white enchantment creature spirit bestow, two white white. Eidolon of Countless Battles, an enchanted creature, each get plus one plus one for each creature card you control, and plus one plus one for each aura you control. Seems pretty powerful there, whether they're on a creature or they fell off and are now a creature. Eidolon of Countless Battles counts them towards its power. And very similarly, Night Howler, one black black bestow for two black black. Night Howler, an enchanted creature, get plus X plus X, where X is the number of creature cards in all graveyards. Depending on who you're playing up against, this could be just as powerful or even more. But now let's look at some of my favorite auras to play. We have Angelic Destiny, Ethereal Armor, and Shielded by Faith. None of these are pretty new cards, so I'll run through them very quickly. But Angelic Destiny, two white white enchantment aura, enchanted creature, enchanted creature gets plus four plus four, has flying, first strike, and is an angel in addition to its other types. When enchanted creature dies, return Angelic Destiny to its owner's hand. Ethereal Armor, single white enchantment aura, enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each enchantment you control and has first strike. Then we have Shielded by Faith, one white white enchantment aura enchant creature enchanted creature has indestructible whenever a creature enters the battlefield you may attach shielded by faith to that creature this is where i really like shielded by faith because you'd make a copy of it every turn and then when you play a creature you can choose the copy or the original to move on to that creature being able to spread out this indestructible to your entire board so lastly here we're going to talk about what else you need as far as this category talking about how you move some of these around because we do have some abilities that you do that and then some ways to get copies of it so first off ardent intrepid archaeologist codsworth handy helper and mirror maid ardent intrepid archaeologist two and a white ledger creature core scout with at the beginning of combat on your turn you may attach any number of auras and equipments you control to target permanent or player you can either move everything over or help redistribute your stuff at whatever you choose. Codsworth, Handy Helper, two and a white, legendary artifact creature robot. Commanders you control have War 2. Tap to add two white. Spend this mana only to cast aura and or equipment spells. And attach target aura or equipment you control to target creature you control. Activate only as a sorcery. Codsworth here gives you some mana to cast those stuff and helps you move them around as well as 
giving your commanders some additional protection. And then Mirror Maid, one blue-blue enchantment. You may have Mirror Maid enter the battlefield as a copy of another artifact or enchantment on the battlefield. Maybe you want to make another copy of Codsworth. You can do that. Or maybe you want another copy of Shield by Faith to put on another creature. Who knows? But you are free to do that. But let's look at the rest of those bestow cards and auras. We have all that glitters. Cavern, Lampad, Combat Research, Daybreakers, Cornet, Erebos's Emissary, Ghostblade, Eidolon, Herald of Torment, Hopeful Eidolon, Nimbus Naiad, Observant, All Seed, Spirit Mantle, Spiteful Returned, Steel of the Godhead, and Thassa's Emissary. So now this next category is going to be looking at enchantment value. But before we do so, I just want to say if you aren't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. I'm going to be doing a ton of new decks from this Modern Horizons 3 set, along with all other kinds of videos as this set is coming out. So let's start out by looking at some new enchantment love. Obviously, we have some staples that care about you casting enchantments in these colors, but what are some new cards we've gotten recently? So we have Ashiok's Reaper, Ariette of the Charmed Apple, and Ariette the Burglar. Ashiok's Reaper is three and a black creature nightmare with when an enchantment you control is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. I particularly like this in this deck because anytime auras or bestow creatures or any sort of enchantment dies, you get to draw a bunch of stuff. So even if a creature gets wiped out, you could draw three, four, five, Five cards who knows Ariette of the charmed apple one white and a black ledger creature human warlock with each creature that's enchanted with an aura you control can't attack you or planeswalkers you control at the beginning of your end step each opponent loses x life and you gain x life where x is the number of auras you control this is exponentially better in this deck because normally you can play them and either make it so your opponents can attack you or you know kind of buff up your board a little bit but you're doubling the number of auras you control during each turn meaning this gets more and more threatening and can deal a ton of damage. And then Ariette the Burglar, one white, blue, black, ledger creature, human warlock with lifelink. Whenever an aura you control becomes attached to a non-land permanent and opponent controls with mana value less than or equal to aura's mana value, gain control of that permanent for as long as that aura is attached to it. Now, I think Ariette here is particularly strong in a deck like this because not that all of these bestow creatures have greater power than maybe the auras you would normally cast, but their mana cost is certainly a little bit higher and being able to bestow this onto a creature and steal it and get value off that seems really great. So next up, let's look at some things that are going to discount those auras because we want to cast as many as possible. Well, we're going to find some ways to discount it. We have Cloud Key, Danatha, Carpathian Paragon, and Starfield Mystic. Pretty simple cards here. Cloud Key, it's going to enter. You get to choose Artifact, Creature, Enchantment, Instant, or Sorcery, and then the chosen spell is one less to cast. Danatha, First Strike, Vigilance, Lifelink, Auras, and Equipment cost one less to cast. And Starfield Mystic, one in a white. Enchantment spells cost one less to cast, and whenever an enchantment is put into your graveyard, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Next up, let's see return, safety, and doubling effects. There wasn't really any other good way to kind of show off all of these cards without labeling it like that, but we have Brilliant Restoration, Sphere of Safety, and Trionic Resonator. So Brilliant Restoration is three white, 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 very, you know, heavy white pips here, but it's a sorcery that says return all artifacts and enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Well, if our graveyard is filled up, this is a great way to get everything back, and maybe we can win that turn. Sphere of Safety, four and a white enchantment. Creatures can't attack you or a planeswalker you control unless the controller pays X for each of those creatures where X is the number of enchantments you control. If you have a big board, there's no way anybody's going to be able to attack you unless they can make infinite mana. So this is an excellent safety card here. We have some other ones in the good stuff, but I very much like Sphere Safety in a lot of enchantment decks. And then Trionic Resonator, two artifact, two and tap, copy target triggered ability you control, you may choose new targets for the copy. Copying your commander is sort of the best thing you can do here. Copying it and getting two sets of those triggers seems amazing. So the other cards in this enchantment value category are Alelia, Artful, Provocateur, Archon of Sun's Grace, Hateful, Eidolon, Core Spirit Dancer, Mesa Enchantress, Ondu Spirit Dancer, Replenish, Resurgent Belief, Transcendent Envoy, Zur the Enchanter, and Zur Eternal Schemer. So lastly here, let's look at these couple cards and good stuff that I think would be cool to add to this deck and some strategies to play. We have Caliphy, Beloved by the Sea, Chromium, The Mutable, and Winds of Wrath. So, Caliphy here, one blue blue legendary enchantment creature demigod, its power is equal to your devotion to blue, and creatures and enchantments you control have spells your opponents cast that target this permanent cost one more to cast. So it gives it pseudo ward in a way. It's not actually ward because if they can't pay then the spell fizzles, it just makes it harder for them to 
Cast anything targeting creatures or enchantments. Chromium, the mutable, four white, blue, black, leisure creature, elder dragon with flash. This spell can't be countered. Flying, discard a card until end of turn. Chromium, the mutable, becomes a human with base power and toughness, one, one. Loses all abilities and gains hexproof. It can't be blocked this turn. Basically, we can load up a whole bunch of stuff onto him. We're going to lose all of those abilities, but we're still going to retain those plus one plus ones however many are on it and this is a way to just end the game very quickly and then winds of wrath three white white sorcery destroy all creatures that are enchanted they can't be regenerated now an important thing you'll see if you look at the deck list is i have a bunch of actually board wipes in this deck because that's one of the main plays get a bunch of bestow creatures onto your stuff then when you have enough power of you know those auras you can wipe the board you are left with a big board of those creatures and you can just swing out and win the game that way but the other good stuff cards there we got arcane signet commander sphere counterspell dam decanter of endless water d spark ghostly prison hindering light lightning greaves path exile propaganda render silent soul ring smoke of midnight supreme verdict swords of plowshares and vindicate just a little side note i did include some token doublers in the maybe board for this deck but they're all just kind of pricey compared to the rest of the deck so you know if you got them or you want to buy them great do that but i didn't want to suggest those if maybe you know that would keep you from making this really fun deck just based on the additional like 150 dollars these cards add but i would just like to say thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video i want to know what you thought to do with arna here because I instantly thought bestow creatures and that's the way I built this deck and I think it's going to be very fun. But is there a way in which you would build this deck differently for me? I would love to hear about it in the comments down below. In addition, if you could leave a like, share this video with a friend, and subscribe, that would mean the world to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And today's Scryfall card of the day is Fanatical Firebrand. The Brazen Coalition is a fire cannon pointed at our enemies. Goblins like him are the spark to its powder. Admiral Beckett Brass. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you later, Planeswalkers.